Hey friends, in today's video, I'm gonna share 10 makeup artist hacks for a flawless and youthful look. I think you guys are gonna love these. Before we get started, I also wanna mention that today is a super exciting day. So excited to share that the BK Beauty and Nikki LaRose brush set is now available to purchase individual brushes. So we launched this back in November and up until today, you could only pick it up in the seven piece set. Starting today, you can pick up any one of these brushes as an individual brush purchase. So you can stock up on some favorites if you already have the full seven piece set or if you've been waiting for them to be released in singles so you could kind of cherry pick ones that you want. They are now available online at bkbeauty.com. I'm so excited. I'll have them all linked down below. In this video, I will be using all seven brushes and only all seven brushes. I'm not incorporating any other brushes into this video. So I wanted to show you just some more ways that you can use these. So Let's get started. So tip number one is to have the skin freshly prepped and hydrated for foundation. I know that seems obvious, but I think sometimes what we do is we put our skincare on in the morning and then maybe we go and do a little work, we make some breakfast, we do some things, and then it's an hour and a half before we're applying our makeup. And by that time, the skin is likely dried at the touch, the skincare products is, have absorbed into the skin, and it's not really the most ideal prep for your makeup. So in cases like that, I would always go back in and kind of rehydrate and replace Plump the skin. You don't have to do all the skincare steps that you do, but just a product like a hyaluronic acid serum or something lightweight that's just going to rehydrate the skin really quickly and give a nice canvas for your foundation to apply. A hydrating primer will work as well. I'm using the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Smoothing Serum. I've really been enjoying this product. It's a newer product and it smells, mm, it smells like the face base. If you like their face base, you will love this just very, very lightweight. Also, really work this underneath the eyes. If there's any place on the skin that you want to be freshly hydrated before you go in and put makeup, it is underneath the eyes because a couple reasons. The skin underneath our eye is the thinnest and it also is the place that we show the most texture. You know, we have expression lines, fine lines, and when you have really thin skin and you have texture, and then you go in with concealer, which is a really thick, heavy product. It's actually the most full coverage product that you use. It can just be a recipe for disaster. It'll magnify texture and actually make you look like you have texture that you didn't even realize you had it before you put the makeup on. You know, do you ever do your makeup and you're like, oh, I kind of like my skin with without all of this makeup on. That's what can happen if you don't have the skin prepped before concealer and foundation. So I've just gone and applied this all over the skin. Oh, it feels so good. It has a nice little tackiness to it. So it's gonna help just grab the foundation and products that we use. Okay, so tip number two is to use a tinted SPF. Now, why a tinted SPF? Well, a tinted SPF is going to give your skin a little bit of coverage, not much, but a little bit of coverage. So that's gonna allow you to use less foundation. It's a much more sheer product and it just looks more natural on the skin. Granted, you're not getting the full coverage that you want or we're working towards, but it allows you to use less actual volume of product in your foundation, which is gonna just have a more natural and youthful look. So my favorite, you guys, is the Elastin Hydro Tint. You can tell that, I mean, this one is like almost done. And I actually picked this one for this video rather than the new one that I've been using the last couple of days because I wanted to share with you another thing I love about this product, aside the fact that it's just so good, is that it's a product that there's very little waste. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is like squeeze. You would think that this is just ready to be tossed. The packaging, the way that they do this, this little mechanism, I don't know, but you have absolutely no waste. I mean, look how easy it is to still get product out of this. So I wanted to share that because I feel like a lot of times I buy product and I'm not able to pump any more out and I toss it, but then I open and I see still product like in there that's being wasted. That is not the case with this. This is so good. So I love this. This has an SPF of 36. I usually don't do a full two pumps like I just did. I'll usually do about a pump and a half. And this is an SPF, which we all want to be wearing every day. And it has a little bit of coverage to it. In fact, some days I will just wear this in a little concealer, like on the days where I'm not really wearing a lot of makeup and I'll skip foundation. But when I use this, I use so much less foundation. And I find that this 
product works beautifully under every foundation. I've been using this for years and I wear it under every foundation formula that I have and I have absolutely no issues with it. It is the best. So I'm gonna be going in with the Nikki LaRose BK Beauty N17 and I love this brush because it's so versatile. So this brush is like a foundation brush. It's a cream blush brush. It is a powder brush. It is so many brushes in one because it has a dual sided fiber. The lighter fiber right here is really great for your liquid or your cream products. It also has phenomenal pickup and payoff. The darker side fibers apply powder products really beautifully and very sheerly and very nice and natural. So what's great is you can do like a full complexion routine with one brush and because you're using alternating sides, there's really not a lot of products mixing together, which is nice. If you just have one, then obviously you're gonna wanna wash it pretty frequently, but now you can buy them individually so you can pick up a couple if you want and use them and you know for different purposes. But I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start with the lighter side first. We're gonna apply our foundation and I'm gonna be using the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is a beautiful foundation, we all know this. <laughs> I'm gonna do about a, one pump. I did maybe about a pump and a quarter of a pump. I'm gonna use the lighter side and I'm actually gonna go to my hand pick it up on the tip of this brush and I'm going to kind of spread this foundation. Now, a lot of times you guys will see me use the 106 brush and I will press and build coverage. Since I don't need a whole lot of coverage today and I wanna keep the foundation light, I'm gonna use more of these like soft sweeping motions. This is just gonna kind of shear the foundation out and give me a little bit more of a natural application. Now, if you do wanna build coverage with this product, you still can get it from this brush. And again, just use the same pressing motion. So in the areas that you want a little more coverage, press, but whenever you wanna shear that product out, use nice long sweeps. And I really like to work in little sections. So rather than applying foundation all over the face, and then going in to blend it all in at once, I will just work in little sections at a time. That way I don't have any of the foundation starting to self-set and then creating an issue trying to blend it out. I really wanna work in sections of the face. I think some of the best formulas and finishes for more mature skin are gonna be your like natural satin finish foundations. So ones that have more of a skin-like finish. So I kind of avoid foundations that say more matte so look for formulas that have more of a satin finish or described as being skin-like or radiant. So pretty. Okay, great. So now I've got my foundation on. We're looking really nice and natural. So for concealer, I'm gonna be using a really hydrating, creamy formula. I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I'm also gonna be using a little bit of the Trish McAvoy uh, Instant Eye Lift. Marnie turned me on to this recently, and I'm gonna use the two together. Now, because I prepped the eye with that Bobbi Brown serum, it still feels nice and prepped. I'm just gonna go in and add a tiny little bit more. It's a cold, windy day in Austin, so my skin is a little bit drier. So I just got a tiny little bit on my ring finger and I'm just going to press this underneath the eye. I don't wanna to apply too much. I just wanna get enough in there to just rehydrate the eye, plump up the skin. The serum's really nice for plumping. Just wanna plump up that area. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the two of these. The Instant Eye Lift is like a color corrector. You can see that it's this nice peachy pink shade. And then we've got the NARS Creamy Concealer in the shade Custard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the color corrector first and I'm just gonna create a couple of little dots, particularly right here because I have green veining there. And then I'm gonna do one dot in the center with this. What's nice about this formula is it's very lightweight. It's not heavy at all. And then I'm going to take the concealer and we are going to apply a little bit next to where I applied the color corrector. I'm also gonna take a little bit right up here. Now, it looks like I've applied a lot, but I haven't actually applied a lot of product. So I'm gonna go in with the N16 and I'm gonna just kind of blend these products together. So I'm gonna just sweep them all together. I'm gonna to pull this up so it gives a little bit of lift and highlight under the eye. What's nice about this brush is the tip of this brush, the fibers extend a little bit and they're a little bit long and wispy. So you can use the tip of it just to really blend and shear out product. But if you want to pack it on a little bit more, you can use the side of the flat side of it and press. Perfect, okay. So I'm using this brush really to just kind of spread it and get that first blend in. Perfect. Next, I'm gonna take the N14, and I don't have any product on this. This is just a clean brush. 
And I'm just gonna kind of bounce this on top of the concealer. This is just a last little extra blend. It's also going to like slightly absorb any excess concealer that I have. I wanna keep the concealer really nice, light, and natural so I don't have any issues with creasing throughout the day. I'm also gonna take whatever's left on my brush now and I'm just gonna kind of sweep it over the eye to give a soft brightening effect to the lid. Oh, that's so, so perfect. I love the N14. It kind of reminds me of a mini 110, which is our larger concealer brush. This brush is really great for powder products. You can use it for liquid highlighter. And I really enjoy it, honestly, as concealer. Perfect, oh, so nice. So tip number three is to keep your powder light. And not only light in formulation, like actual consistency of the product, but light in your application. I think one misconception that we hear a lot is that as we get older, as we age, we can't do this. We shouldn't wear powder, we shouldn't wear shimmers, we shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do that. And it's really not about that. I think we can still wear all of those products, but it is important on how you apply those products. And I think that powder is one of those products that we really have to reevaluate how we apply it, where we apply it, and how much of it we apply. So today I'm going to be using the Milk Makeup Loose Powder. This is the Pore Eclipse Translucent Powder. And I'm going to go back in with my N17 brush, and I'm going to use the darker side of the brush. And I'm just going to pick up, and I've got it pretty evenly distributed, but I definitely don't want all this powder on my face. So I'm going to go into the little lid here, and we're going to kind of tap it off. I'm also going to just tap off on my hand any excess powder that we have. So a lot of powder is coming off of this brush. Now, I just like to powder underneath my eyes to set that concealer, and I usually will powder the center of the face. That's where I tend to produce the most oils, and that's just usually where I need that powder reinforcement. So first we're gonna go underneath the eyes, and I'm just gonna press the brush under the eyes. This has a nice tapered tip to the brush, so it, even though it's larger for an under eye, Brush, it still works really well. This powder is really nice because it's a very lightweight and it's very, very blurring. It will mattify the skin, so keep that in mind if you're someone that doesn't like a real matte look, it is gonna give you that. But because it's so sheer, it's not gonna look like a heavy, flat, or dry matte. It's very nice. And I also like to powder just kind of right here in these smile lines. I will tend to have my foundation migrate there. Not so much in the winter, but in the summertime when it's a million degrees in Texas, it doesn't matter what foundation I use, it will slowly make its way into these deep folds. So I will kind of just powder that to act, like act as a little extra reinforcement. And then the center of my forehead. Now I'm gonna be applying cream products over here, so I'm gonna try and avoid powder there for now. I might go back later and do that, but for now we're gonna keep that space nice and bare and powder free. So I'm gonna take the N15 to bronze my skin. I'm gonna warm up the face. Today I chose to go with a powder bronzer. I'm really into cream products lately, cream bronzers, cream blushes. I am gonna be using a cream and liquid blush formula, but I wanted to share a powder bronzer formula that I've really been loving and I think works really great for mature skin. This is the Jane Iredell Powder Bronzer. I'm the shade light. I do find that the shades run a little darker than you might think. Like usually I'm not light, usually I'm medium, but the medium one would be too deep for me. So this is just a really beautiful, lightweight, silky formula. It is so beautiful and it just is very consistent. It's a very consistent, easy product to blend. It's a matte bronzer. And I'm gonna take the N15 and I'm just gonna load up the brush. This is a really great size of brush for bronzer, even for smaller faces. So I'm just gonna kind of press this onto the skin. I like to start like right about here. What is this kind of the, not the top of my ear here, but the top of my ear here. And I'm just gonna press it onto the skin to deposit that color. If you want a more natural like wash of color, use a more sweeping motion, which I will do that motion as I get here into the hairline. I also love this brush. It's the perfect size to apply bronzer right here on the temple, just to really kind of meet that eyebrow arch and your hairline. And then when I get into the hairline up here, I'll just sweep. I love this brush for cream blush or cream bronzer. I also love it for foundation. That was something that Nikki turned me on to. It wouldn't be one that I would think to use for foundation, but when I did it, I, she told me to do it. She's like, oh my God, you'll love it for liquid foundation. And when I did it for liquid foundation, I was like, wow, this is so good. Perfect, okay. It's super soft and it does a great job of picking up product and laying it down and also blending it out though. It gives you the finish of like a soft fluffy brush, but it also like highly performs when it comes to picking up product and placing it. Sometimes when you're working with really soft, fluffy brushes, they have a nice, pretty soft blend, but they might not be the best at picking up product. 
this kind of does both. Okay, so now that I've got my bronzer on, I'm just gonna run whatever's left over on my nose, really light and natural. Perfect. Okay, so now we're at tip number four. Let's talk about blush. Highly recommend a cream or a liquid blush. This just gives a really beautiful, glowy, healthy, and youthful look to the skin. And I recommend sticking with like warm pinks or peachy tones. There's just something about a pink and a peachy tone. Now you can do a pink peachy or you could do peach or you could do pink. It just gives like life and a youthful look to the skin. Even more so I think than like a berries or a cool tone mauve blush. So so I think that, yeah, it's just, it gives this really beautiful, healthy look. We're gonna be using the Tarte Blush Tape. I love this formula. I actually think I like it better than the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Wands, believe it or not. I love the Beauty Wands, but the one complaint that I hear from a lot of people is they're too shimmery for me. This, you get a pretty glow, but it's not as shimmery. So it's really, really nice and subtle, which is really great for more mature skin or textured skin because you're gonna get that highlight, but you're not going to get a heavy frost to the skin. And this color is the shade pink. It's just the shade pink. and. I will talk about placement when we're talking about the tip here. So I'm actually going to apply this to the back of my hand rather than to my face. I find that I just get a much prettier blend when I work off the back of my hand than when I apply products directly to my skin, especially since we did powder, even though we tried to avoid that area. If this interacts with powder when I first dot it on the skin, it might give me a little more resistance when blending out. So go to the back of your hand. It also allows you to pre-blend and work it into the brush. I'm still gonna use the N50 I'm gonna use the tip of this brush and I'm just gonna pick up the product, kind of work it into the brush so there's not too much right on the surface. And placement. I like to start at the apples of the cheeks as a guideline, blend it into the apples of the cheeks, and then kind of lift and make your way up here to this the orbital bone area. So you still get that really pretty youthful like pop on the cheeks, but then you also get that lift from applying it a little bit up, not to down. So we don't wanna go straight back and we don't wanna go down. And always start with a lighter hand. You can always go back in and grab more product. Oh, isn't that so pretty? Just has the prettiest glow. And then I'm gonna run that right up here into the temple. Because this color is nice and light, I can do that. If you're working with a really dark or bold color, you can still run it up here, but you want to be very mindful, not for it to look too heavy. So pretty. And then I'm gonna run it even like right in here. If you're trying to find the perfect place to apply blush, just smile and you'll see your cheek pop right away. And that's your guide. So oh, nice, okay. And then I'm gonna take just whatever's left, there's not much, and I'm just gonna run it across the nose. So I kind of have this like soft blush throughout the center of the face. So tip number five revolves around eyes. And the tip is keeping a lot of brightness in the inner corner and inner half of the eye. You don't really wanna weigh that space down with a dark or a heavy shadow. Now you can still do a really beautiful, like smoky or glamorous or deeper eye, but just try and keep some of that space brighter and lighter. Now I'm gonna start by using the MAC Paint Pot in the shade Soft Ochre. This is one that I use in most of my videos. I absolutely love this as an eyeshadow primer. Not only the, does the formula perform really well, it gives the shadow something to adhere to, and it also keeps it on all day, so it performs really well for that, but I love the color of this. The color is a light, bright, kind of just basic vanilla or bone shade. It just gives a really nice, bright, even canvas for the shadow. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna use the N16 brush. This is the brush I used to blend my concealer. I love this for cream shadows. It's basically like your finger, but even better. The size is perfect. And because it has those little extended fibers at the tip, it really helps you sheer out a cream shadow. And when it comes to applying a cream shadow, you wanna keep it sheer because you wanna keep the products on the eyes nice, light, and sheer. So I'm just gonna sheer this out all over. I'm gonna use the tip to really work this close to the lashes, and then I'm gonna bring it up underneath the brow. And I'm particularly going to feather it right here in that inner corner. So now you can see we have a nice even canvas and you can see obviously this is brighter than the other side. We're gonna move on to the other side. So you can see that I'm really working this in the inner corner up here. I'm not just concentrating on the lid and moving over, I'm really blending this in right here, like almost to the side of the bridge of the nose and to meet the brow. Once I have my eyeshadow on, having that place there is gonna give a very subtle bright effect. It's not gonna look like I have makeup there, 
but it's gonna brighten that area up. What I'm kind of doing is I'm just kind of expanding the eye, making it appear to be larger and appear to have more space. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with my first shade on the eye. I'm using the N13 brush. This is a nice, beautiful, I love this brush. It's a crease brush. And what I love about this brush is it magically performs in like very conflicting ways. So it is very soft and fluffy at the tip. So you can get a really pretty blend with this brush, but it's also got some stiffness to it at the base. So what that does is it helps really picking up a lot of product and laying it down. Usually when we see crease brush, they are soft and fluffy and they just do a great job of blending but sometimes we'll go in and place with another brush if we want a high impact this you can get a high impact and a really pretty blend together it's also really nice and tapered so you have a lot of control it's great for all eye shapes whether you have large eyes or very small eyes you can really control the placement with this brush so I'm gonna be using this Patrick Ta palette this is the major dimension eyeshadow palette and this palette is stunning I bought this you know a while back and I just rediscovered it to today. It has a nice row here of matte shades and you got some really pretty shimmer accent shades here. I'm going to go into this shade right here and it is a matte shade so it's perfect for creating definition and it's a little bit darker than my skin tone but it's not you know it's not real dark. I'm just starting to create the shape of the eye so I want something that is not too dark and I'm going to just place it right here in my crease. I like to turn my brush upside down so that my crease, while it starts in the crease, it actually fades and blends a little bit higher. That'll give the eye a little more lift. So I have the brush turned upside down and I'm just using the tip of it to work and blend out. So rather than being like this, I'm like this. And there's quite a difference in the application when you do that. This brush is really great too if you like to extend your crease out a little bit because it has that stiffness, It you can really get nice pickup and payoff when you try to extend it out. I think this is the palette that Nikki did on me when she did my makeup, which by the way, I don't know if I've ever loved my makeup so much. It was amazing. I will link that video for you right here. Nikki does my makeup. You have to watch it if you haven't already. She's also using all of these brushes so you can see different ways that she uses them. And then last I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same brush, take the tip, and I'm gonna connect that crease to the lash line. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna keep the eyes pretty light, meaning I'm not gonna go with a lot of heavy colors, but I do want to give a little more definition. So I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is like one shade up. It's a really pretty, beautiful, warm, orangey brown. And we're just gonna pick this up on the tip of the brush and we're gonna, just gonna focus this right in the outer corner and kind of outer part of the lid. And I'm gonna resist the urge to keep layering this because the look I'm going for, I want it to be soft. I think soft lightness in the eyes really leans itself to a really beautiful, youthful look to the eye. Because what it does is it just really naturally enhances your natural eye without distracting away from it. Okay, so there we go. All right, next we're gonna lean back into tip number five, which is doing that brightness in the inner half and inner corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the N12 brush. This is possibly my favorite brush from the collection. I don't dare I say it. I just love this brush. It's really unlike any BK Beauty brush that we have. It's a very wide smudger brush and I use this in so many ways. I don't just use this as an eyeshadow smudger brush, which might be like the one obvious way to use it. So I'm gonna use it. I use this for the eyelid. I use it for the inner corner. I use it for underneath the brow. We're gonna do all that today. I will use to blend out a lip liner. It's just really, really multitasking. So I'm gonna go in first with this shade right here and I'm going to really layer this brush up. Now, what makes this brush unique from mo most smudger brushes is yes, it's a smudger brush, but it also has a fair amount of surface area here. So it really can work as an eyeshadow brush, really, especially for those of you with really small eyes or hooded eyes, it can really work as an eyeshadow brush. It's not just a smudger brush. So I've loaded this up and I'm going to come right in here to the eye and I'm gonna place that right in the inner corner of the eye. And then I'm gonna flip the brush and I'm going to extend that brightness out here. I'm gonna extend that bright brightness out here so it's almost like the side of the top of my nose. This shade is nice because it's essentially a matte with a subtle amount of sparkle to it. It's not shimmery, but there is some sparkle there. It's like a matte sparkle. It's so beautiful. And I'm just gonna pack it on. I really want this to be packed on. Oh, that is so stunning. Let's do the other eye. 
Now I wanna talk a little bit about shimmer and mature eyes or textured eyes. I think that's the one thing we hear a lot is, you know, if you've got mature eyes or got a lot of texture on the eyes, you shouldn't wear shimmer shadows. And I disagree with that. Shimmers are fun and they're beautiful. And number one, we should wear whatever we feel good in. So even if what I'm about to tell you goes against what you like, just throw this advice out the window. This is your life. This is your makeup. This is your face and you should do whatever you want. Okay. But when it comes to shimmers, Typically what can happen if we use a really heavy foiled metallic shimmer is that can really highlight and accentuate any texture in the skin. It's just kind of designed to do that. So if our goal is not to highlight that, let's look for shimmers that are more sheer, softer. Let's look for more satin formulas, just formulas that give a really pretty light reflecting quality, but that aren't heavy frosts. This is one of them. This is really stunning and very beautiful. Now, if you have a heavy frost that you absolutely love, like you love the color, you love the formula, it brings you joy to wear it, wear it. If you wanna experiment with different ways to apply it, use a fluffy brush like this versus a flat, dense brush to apply it because this will apply it in a much more sheer way. So that's another way that you can experiment with products that you're loving, but you wanna to try to apply them in a softer way. Okay, I'm loving this. I'm thinking I need to even this side out though and pack on a little bit more. Okay, perfect, okay. Lovely, so nice. All right, I feel like I want a little extra. I want a little extra. I'm gonna go into this shimmery shade here. We're gonna use the same brush. I'm gonna load up both sides and I'm just gonna place this like right in the center. Let's see, perfect. Yeah, just for a little subtle extra pop. Oh, so nice. I'm gonna take that first shade we used, the light one, and I'm gonna pop it right under the brow. This brush is perfect for underneath the brow highlight, especially if you go in right after you've already applied your other eyeshadow and your crease is already there. You just have this tiny little space that you wanna highlight. This brush is perfect. Okay, so we're moving on to tip number six. If you're still with me, drop a comment and let me know. I know this video is a long one, but when you get me started on makeup hacks and makeup tips, I can tend to go a little lengthy and overboard. But let's talk about liner. So liner placement is so important, especially as we get older and gravity starts to fall. Maybe our lids sag a little bit or we have more of a hooded eye shape. You really wanna make sure that your eyeliner is not taking up all of the real estate on your eyes. You want your shadow to really help brighten the eye, open the eye like we've done. So if I went in with a really heavy liner right now, it would just kind of ruin all the beautiful work we've done. So we're going to keep the liner very thin, as thin as possible in the inner corner. We're going to try and keep this lightness here and we're going to keep the liner concentrated to the outer half of the lash line. So think outer half, outer corner. It can get a little thicker here too, especially if you have the space on the lid. I also recommend trying to go with a rich brown. Try to go with a dark, rich brown, almost black. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a light brown. It can still be very rich, very impactful, but I find that a rich brown just looks softer and softer can translate to a little more youthful. This is the Quick Stick Tarte Eyeliner. And I love this because it has a liner on one side and then it has a cream shadow on the other side. And it's just a very useful, practical product. And even if I'm not planning to use this, the days that I use this liner, I'll find myself finding some way to use this. <laughs> so that's what we'll do today. So I'm going to focus on the outer half and what I love about this formula of pencil too is it's nice and creamy and soft which means you have time to smudge it and soften it which is what we're going to do today so I'm just going to concentrate like getting the product on it doesn't have to be perfect we got it there I built it up I have enough to move and work around with then I'm going to go in with my N11 angled brush. This is the Nikki LaRose BK Beauty N11. It's a nice, wide, stiff angle brush. And I'm gonna use this with a little bit of shadow. We're going into this dark shadow here, dark matte shadow. And I'm just gonna kind of press this and pull this over the liner. Now I start by angling the angle out. So rather than having it angled into the inner corner of my eye, I have it angled out. And I'm going to just kind of run it over that liner. So doing this is doing a couple of things. One, it is setting that eyeliner, that waxy coal formula, it's setting it. So think how we use powder to set our foundation so it lasts all day. We're doing the same thing, but we're doing it with shadow and eyeliner. So it's gonna set that, keep it from transferring. And then once I've done that, I can kind of pull it out and wing it out and manipulate this liner, which I'm gonna do now. It's hard to do this with one hand. Normally I would be in a mirror and I'd have my other hand helping me with my eye, but we are in the sake of keeping this tutorial as easy for you guys to follow. I'm going to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. 
So I've got my liner almost done. I wanna extend this liner a little bit, so I'm going to take the brush, go into the shadow, tap it off, and I'm just gonna use whatever shadow I have there to create this very soft and subtle wing. Do you see what that did? That just kind of lifts and elongates the eye a little bit. So instead of that liner pulling your eye down to see my eye droop, you're now seeing my eye elongated and lifted. Okay, so I'm gonna go do the other side. So now we have our liner on. I'm gonna take the N12 brush. Remember, this is the one that we use to highlight. And I'm just going to run this underneath, like straight underneath that little wing. It, since it has that bright shadow on it, the light shadow, it's gonna give a subtle, brightening effect and also just kind of clean that wing up a bit. So that's a little trick you can do. You can also put some makeup remover on this if you want to clean up a wing liner that maybe didn't get as sharp or as clean as you had hoped. You can use this as a cleanup tool. So I'm gonna take the same brush and we're gonna go in with this shade here and we're going to smudge this on the lower lash line. I think a soft liner on the lower lash line really lends itself to a pretty and youthful look. The whole idea with the eyes when you're trying to just create a more youthful look is to keep things really light and very soft. When we get too heavy or too dark or too harsh, that can kind of add a few years to the face. So keep everything soft. So instead of doing a dark eyeliner, I'm doing a soft shadow. And I'm still getting definition there, but it's much softer. And I'm choosing a shadow that complements my eye color. I have green eyes and I'm choosing a really warm orangey brown. So that's just gonna make the green eyes pop even more. Perfect. Okay, so tip number seven, you guys, mascara. Take your time with mascara. I know sometimes mascara isn't as fun to apply, and I think it's real easy to just kind of rush through it. But so, like I said, keeping the eyes nice and light is kind of the goal for a real youthful looking open eye, right? When we go really dark and heavy, it kind of weighs the eye down and it makes it just look a little smaller. It just does. So you can avoid doing all of the dark shadow or the, like the dramatic shadow, but you can still get a very glamorous and dramatic look by building up your lashes. So let's go ahead and curl them. And next, I'm going to highly encourage you guys, if you're not already, to using a lash primer. Okay, I love the Dior. I've been using this for years. It conditions the lashes. It actually helps improve the health of your lashes, and it just makes your mascara look a whole lot better. So I'm going to do a couple of coats of this, and today I'm actually going to be using a new mascara. It's the Gucci mascara, you guys. I was on Sephora's website, and I was just looking at mascaras, and I saw that this one in Allure Best in Beauty Award, and I couldn't remember that I tried it before, so I picked it up. I liked the wand. I really like these nice little kind of tiny teeth rubbery wands because they do a great job of separating the lashes typically. This is the first time I'm using this mascara, so we, we will see. I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth at the root. I like to kind of close the eye and rest it on the wand and then wiggle back and forth and pull up. That way I'm getting most of the product applied and deposited at the root of the lashes to give that really rich, full volume look. And I like to keep the lashes wispy and as separated as possible. This formula is nice. It's very dramatic. It's very volumizing. Like, wow, it kind of built a lash up for me real quick. Okay, I'm going to do the other side. And I like to work kind of quickly. You want to do this before your lash primer has time to dry because once the lash primer has time to dry, you'll have a harder time separating the lashes when you go and apply the mascara. So make sure you do it when the lash primer is still wet. Ooh, I like this formula. It's very, very dramatic and it's quick. Like it's giving lots of volume real fast. I'm not having to build it up a ton. And I like the wand because it's nice and thin. So I have good control over it. I don't want to say it yet because I feel like I might jinx myself, but I haven't made any messes yet. Ooh, I do like it. Okay. Do you see how that just lifts and opens the eye? Even if I had no shadow on at all, and I just had a little simple liner and mascara, this mascara would just open up the eye and really look beautiful. Lovely. Okay, so tip number eight, we're on to lips now. And tip number eight is to find a like rosy neutral lip liner. I'm using the Pillow Talk Lip Liner by Charlotte Tilbury. I also love Pillow Talk Medium. That's one of my favorite shades. But just use something with a little warmth, a little bit color, something that's gonna give your lips a little bit of color, but that's also pretty natural looking and natural to a lip color. I'm going to slightly overline my lips. Now I'm not lining outside of my lip line, but I'm really like taking it to the border of my lip line, you know? I'm not lining inside my lip, I'm lining to the border of my lip. 
And I like to do a nice thick lip liner. I like to trace over it several times and make that liner thick. That way when it wears off, it wears off really naturally and flattering. It doesn't look like a harsh liner on the lips has worn off. Okay, and here's where the tip comes in, you guys. So I have the lips lined, right? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect these li my little Cupid's bow. I'm just gonna kind of run this lip line right over it to kind of connect it. So I'm more rounding the lip out. I'm gonna go in with the BK Beauty Inner Beauty Lipstick. This is a really nice rosy neutral shade. Oh, so pretty. One of my favorite colors. Look at that. I really love our formula. I know I'm a little biased, but it's very pigmented. It's lightweight. It's nice silky formula. And then the last tip for lips is to add a little bit of gloss or highlight in the center of the lips. Now this can be a clear gloss, this can be a shimmery gloss. If you're working with a shimmer product, try and find one that's really refined shimmer. So when you look at it, if it looks like thick, chunky glitter, I would avoid that. But look for something where the shimmer and glitter particles are so, so refined. Today I actually chose to use the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip. I love these. And this is the shade Rose. It's just a really great, soft rosy shade and this doesn't really have glitter to it but it has a really high shine so I'm just gonna run this in the center Ooh, this formula is really soft so don't put too much pressure or you'll end up with a mess you really kind of just want to blot it on the lips honestly I just even put, put too much pressure when I applied it just press it in the center that's gonna highlight the lip did you just see what that did it instantly highlighted the lip made my lips look more full Okay, so that's nine tips. I told you I was gonna give you 10. I'm actually pretty certain that I dropped a few extra in there, but tip number 10 is highlighting the face. Now, this is something that I don't do every day because again, I live in Texas and I'm always concerned with my makeup looking matte and fresh and I not too shiny because my skin naturally gets shiny here in Texas. But the truth is, is that a soft, subtle glow to the skin can really portray health, youthfulness. It just looks like uh, vitality, like just really, really beautiful. But the key is keeping it soft and keeping it natural. I personally love like more liquid or cream illuminizers. Today we're going to be working with the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. This is a great product because you can use it in so many ways. You can mix this with your moisturizer and apply it all over for an all over subtle glow. You can mix this in with your foundation before you apply your foundation for an all over subtle glow or to give a matte foundation a radiant finish. Or you can use it like I'm going to use it today to give a last minute highlight to a full complete face. Um, now, the tip is I would say to go to the skin first. You certainly can apply it with the wand, but we're going to go to the skin first just so we have some control and we don't apply too much. And I'm going to be using the N14 brush. We're going to go in here and use this brush. You could also use the N17. That would be really nice. I want to have a lot of control though. I don't want to apply this in too large of a space. I'm going to use the tip of the brush pick up the product and we're going to just apply this to the high planes of the face. So what that is, it's like right here on the temple and right here. We already have quite a bit of a uh, highlight from our blush, so I'm not going to take it too far over because you're already seeing that highlight, right? But I do want a little bit of highlight right here and I'm just using this brush. I'm just pressing it into the skin. This brush is great. It's going to blend out and you're not really going to have to do much, but just press it onto the skin. I'm also going to put a little bit down the bridge of my nose. Look at this. Okay. So just a little bit down the bridge of my nose. This brush has a nice little tip to it. So you can do this perfectly. Look at that. Oh, do you see what that did? Just gave a really pretty highlight. You can also do a little bit right here. You can even use your fingers a last minute. Blend a little bit on the chin, a little bit right here in the inner corner of the eye, and even a little bit right above the brow. Keep it soft, keep it light, keep it natural. Oh, so pretty. Whew, that was a lot of information. I really hope that you took away something from this video. If you learned even one thing or one tip that you're going to implement into your makeup routine the next time you do your makeup, drop a comment and let me know. Please, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I poured a lot of love into this video and I just hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to have all the products uh, linked down below. I'm also going to link to Nikki LaRose and BK Beauty brush set. I used only her brush in this video. I didn't use any other brushes. I used did everything that we did today with all seven brushes. So like I mentioned, these are available for individual purchase right now. You can still pick up the set if you want, but if you have been waiting just to grab your favorites or just, you know, just been waiting for the singles, they are now available. So I'll have them linked down below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you guys have a beautiful day and I will see you in my next one. Bye.